Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Poetry Series. I'm Neil Aiken, and on this channel I read poetry, mostly work by contemporary poets, occasionally poems of my own, and once in a while poems from the past. Today's poem comes to us from Larry Levis and appears in the Selected Levis, um, a revised edition selected and edited by David St. John, published by University of Pittsburgh Press in 2000. This was, uh, this was a posthumous collection of Levis's work who had passed away in 1996. Um, the poem I'm going to read is entitled, In the City of Light. The last thing my father did for me was map away. He died, and so made death possible. If he could do it, I will also someday be so honored. Once, at night, I walked through the lit streets of New York, from the Gramercy Park Hotel up Lexington, and at that hour, alone, I stopped hearing traffic, voices, the racket of spring wind lifting a newspaper high above the lights, the streets wet and shining, no sounds. Once, when I saw my son be born, I thought how loud this world must be to him, how final. That night, out of respect for someone missing, I stopped listening to it. Out of respect for someone missing, I have to say, this isn't the whole story. The fact is I was still in love. My father died and I was still in love. I know it's in bad taste to say it quite this way. Tell me, how would you say it? The story goes, wanting to be alone and wanting the easy loneliness of travelers. I said goodbye in an airport and flew west. It happened otherwise. And where I'd held her close to me, my skin felt raw and flayed. Descending, I looked down at light lacquering fields of pale vines and small towns, each with a water tower, then the shadows of wings, then nothing. My only advice is not to go away, or go away. Most of my decisions have been wrong. When I wake, I lift cold water to my face, I close my eyes, a body wishes to be held and held, and what can you do about that? because there are faces I might never see again. There are two things I want to remember about light and what it does to us. Her bright green eyes at an airport, how they widened as if in disbelief, and my father opening the gate, a lit and silent city. And that was Larry Levis in the City of Light from the Selected Levis, revised edition, published uh, Original edition 2000, this revised edition 2003, University of Pittsburgh Press. Um, and uh, it is an honor to read Levis's work. Um, he is one of my heroes. Um, his work is, is definitely remarkable and evocative and so incredibly imaginative um, and moving. I'm thankful for the opportunity to share these uh, poems and to read for you each uh, week, at least three different times. And uh, thankful for all of you who join in and watch. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, no, it's a little bit dry. But um, let's see, what else can I say? Oh, if you want to learn more about Larry Levis, please do check out the video description for more information about Levis. There's a bio, there's a link back to the press to purchase a copy of the anthology. And <coughs> a list of other projects and links to, to things I'm currently working on. Um, if you want to support the channel, it's very easy to do so. You can just hit the like button. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. You'll be notified whenever there's a new video, which is every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. If you have any suggestions or ideas or poets or poems you'd like to see featured on the series, please do comment below. I read all the comments. I don't always get back to everyone, but I do try. And I do appreciate uh, your efforts to share these videos on social media and expand sort of the readership, the encounter that people have with contemporary poetry. That ultimately is the big goal here. Um, I want to celebrate these wonderful poems and these poets and in some small way, hopefully expand the world um, for other people who may not have encountered these poets, may not know these poems, uh, maybe not even really think of themselves as being interested in poetry. And perhaps something that we read in this series uh, will connect and uh, will inspire you to go back and read more, perhaps even to write and uh, to find your own creative outlet. So I hope that's the case. 
I am delighted to continue to serve you in this way, continue to read and, uh, and celebrate these poems and these poets. And I wish you all the very best on your creative journey uh, as we close out one week, begin a new week, um, and the adventures lie ahead for each of us in terms of what will happen on the page and what will happen in our lives. I know that as we continue to turn uh, inward and outward and uh, do what we can to speak truth and to find a way to, to recognize the common connections between us all, that uh, we will find uh, the power of language and poetry is, is capable of bringing together us as a community and as a people and uh, as writers, as human beings. It sounds very grandiose and very, <laughs> very optimistic, but I do believe in the power of literature to do that and hope that you find that uh, in operation in your life um, as you make the effort to discover poetry and make room for it. So thank you all for being part of the readership and we will, part of the readership, being part of the, the viewership for these, uh, these, po these readings and these uh, videos. And uh, until next time, stay safe and well, keep reading, keep writing. We'll be back again soon with another poem and another reading. And until then, um, all the best to you and good luck with your writing and good luck with your reading. And I will see you again in the next video. Until then, goodbye.